Hello everyone and welcome to CloudSec 2021. My name is Mohammed Ibrahim and I am the Cloud Business Developer Manager for Middle East and North Africa. Today in our topic, we will be covering infrastructure as a code and meeting the regulations and compliances across this new pillar. So when it comes to cloud migration, we have been seeing lots of customers after the COVID uh, pandemic moving their business and data centers from the on-prem to the cloud. And this has been a challenging process with lots of benefits, but still we are facing lots of issues and mig while migrating into the cloud. Migrating to cloud, looking into moving your workloads, servers, applications. And when we started publishing the cloud into uh, the business into the cloud, we have been seeing lots of containers, serverless and cloud storage. And this actually is the micro segmentation of applications. And this is where the future is going. And most of customers are building most of their apps into containers and serverless. And even you can see some of the storages being held on the cloud as well. In order to achieve all this framework, we have to make sure we meet the compliances, governance and standardization in order to maintain the business consistency and making sure security also are met because this is one of the very important pillars that we will cover today on how to achieve this. So what is IAC? Infrastructure as a code has been a well noted framework that most of customers are building a template or a file that includes lots of their configurations in order to run a workload or servers or their application inside the cloud. So in old days, in order for most of the customers to build a server, they have to request for this. They have to build their operating system. Then they start building the application on top of it. This might be requesting or taking actually more than a month, lots of hours. But nowadays with IEC, with a simple coding that you can write on a template or a file, you can generate multiple of servers, even hundreds of them in less than minutes or seconds as well. So what it can achieve IAC? When we ask most of the customers, why are you moving into infrastructure as a code? The first thing they always talk to us and mention the speed. I'm building lots of assets and workloads on the cloud. And I cannot achieve this by building the traditional way in data centers where you go into a physical server and start building it from scratch. So IAC helps you in order to generate multiple, even hundreds of servers on workloads on the cloud with just a simple coding. The second point that we have been also seeing is the control. When you are building a big infrastructure on the cloud and specifically with multiple uh, cloud prov providers, let's say AWS, let's say Azure, G Cloud, and all of those uh, published cloud providers, you need to make sure you have a full visibility about where your assets, how you are configuring them, how you are generating those, and you have a full control across the application running on each and every one of those workloads. Final thing is consistency, where you can be able to make changes, build biz lines, be able to control and do whatever uh, requirements that you need to build those templates, and you have a full operation life cycle, including ticketing system, compliances, and the standardization, especially if you are, for example, um, moving a PCI machine into the cloud and you need to meet such regulations when it comes to a HIPAA, uh, ISO 27001, and others as well. So we have lots of use cases when we are talking into IAC. And one of those use cases that customers are always talking about is how to migrate their workloads into the cloud. Specifically, if you have specific uh, regulations that has been already met while you are on-prem and you want to take it over into the cloud or uh, into one of the cloud providers that you have. Another point that we have been also seeing when you have a large environment with thousands and even hundreds of servers, applications, storage, and all of this, you need to make sure you have a control on those things. And whenever you want to do a change on hundreds of servers, it's easy way. And you can easily 
change and do the configuration among multiple servers. Another point also we discussed with our customer is how to achieve the best practices. I know that most of customers say, I have an issue having multiple cloud providers on my uh, infrastructure. So I'm hosting some of my workloads in Azure. I have some of S3 buckets on AWS. I have others on G Cloud. So how I can achieve a well-architected framework and the best practices when it comes to security and compliances across all of those pillars. And finally, being able to continue this cycle when it comes to process and people with the DevOps team and others, uh, security uh, engineers as well. So Gartner came with a, a, a statement in 20, saying that in 2023, 99% of the cloud security failures will be through the customers. And I would say it's mainly mentioning people. And we say people, this is what we are talking into DevOps in our situation here. Those are the people who write the codes. Those are the people who do the file and the template. Those are the people who manage to build the infrastructure by writing their codes. And at the end, when I say infrastructure as a code, it's just a code in a file. So it has lots of things to be done like scanning those codes, making sure they are well written in a security manner, making sure also they are meeting the standards. So Gartner came and said that CSPM, which we call it Cloud Security Posture Management Tools, need to be implemented and be in place in order to reduce the human factor or the risk factor that might be caused by DevOps. And I'm moving forward. This is also one of the challenges that we have been seeing, and it has been mentioned that most of the DevOps writing those IAC codes doesn't have the security skills or background. So most of their focus is to build the application or build the code and go live in production. However, this could be very risky if we are building our IAC code and file in an unsecure way and the code is vulnerable and can be executed by exploiting any uh, type of uh, malware inside it and injecting any type of scripts. So what we are doing here and what we are proposing in Trend Micro, we have a couple of solutions definitely we can help customer with. For infrastructure as a code pipeline, we can cover lots of aspects when it comes to this part. So starting with the DevOps part, while we are building our code in real time, and this is a key word that I always mention to my customers, how you can achieve the best practice and being able to write and execute your IAC file and code in a secure manner in a real time. So your developers making sure they can correct and make sure nothing is being written in uh, or misconfigured in their uh, files while doing the registration or provisioning. So this is what we can help customer in it. In Trend Micro, we can do something like adding a plugin for the IDE uh, VS Code plugin, where we can work in real time with your developers and or DevOps, and we can give them highlights about their coding in real time, what's going on, how it is misconfigured, and how to remediate such action. Another part, if we pass this pillar, which mainly we call it the template scanner. So if you already built your uh, template through uh, Terraform, through ARM, through other tools, because each cloud provider has its own way of uh, writing the IEC uh, file or the coding itself. And different, definitely it varies from one user to another. So if you already have those templates written and ready to be published and going in production and live, Definitely, we can help by scanning those templates and making sure that those templates scanning and with an API, like integrating with your GitHub or GitLab or other uh, uh, tools as well, is being integrated with our scanner or others as well, and making sure this template is secure and out of any misconfiguration, prior of going live in the production or going live and generating your um, infrastructure itself. That's not all. 
definitely we have to complete the cycle and this can only achieved by having a full framework and an operation of excellence and being able to uh, generate ticketing system that can help you with the DevOps to complete the full circle itself. So if there is any flaws, any misconfiguration, again, it's a well-architected framework or your best practices, this can be um, reported or alerted to a ticketing system itself, and it can go back to the initial stage to the DevOps or the developers team in order for them to take action and do the required remediation and fix before going public and in production. So in order to summarize this, we have to take care of some of the points that we discussed today. Applying the best practice and well-architected framework is something that most of the uh, DevOps, specifically the one building their IAC and building their files need to be taken care of. And this is what CSPM tools can help you in achieving this, as we mentioned. Real-time scanning, as I highlighted, is a crucial point where you need to make sure even your DevOps will educate themselves and gaining the security experience and skill sets while they are writing the code every time because they will be learning during coding and during generating those type of templates. Meeting compliance and standards is something that's really crucial when you are specifically going into IEC. And uh, for example, if you are talking about uh, lots of templates that can be provided in order to help you achieving your ISO, your uh, HIPAA, your PCI, your NIST, so we can help as well, giving you specific pre-configured templates that can be run and can generate those compliance and standard. And finally, being able to be compatible with multiple cloud provider, maybe AWS, maybe Azure or G Cloud, we can help as well in this period. So you need to make sure when you are writing your IAC code or you are generating your infrastructure as a code as well, it is fulfilling those points that we talked about. So you can complete the full cycle of security, compliance and regulation, and making sure your IAC is well architected and meeting the practices.